Hello there, everybody. How are you doing? My name is Mike, and uh, I'm going to continue this playthrough of Dark Souls 2. And today we're going to go on my quest for the good old-fashioned Claymore. The Claymore is one of the best weapons in Dark Souls 1. You can also get it very, very early, much earlier than this. But I'll talk about it when I get it. First, let's free Rosabeth. Let's take a look at the Fragrant Branch of Yore first, though. Fragrant tree branch with a faint sweet smell restores the life of things turned to stone. Hmm. And there is Rosabeth. Let's talk to her. Apparently, the petrifaction makes you feel a bit uh, verklempt. Hmm. There's a thing on her head there, isn't it? It's a little weird. A little odd set of gems around her waist there. It's a little bit peculiar. No, oh, no. No problem. That's odd. Do they expect you to leave immediately after you do this and come back after, you know, doing something else? A prism stone. Prism stones do not have anything to do with pyromancy. And if they do, that is not adequate thanks, young lady. They don't look that bad. It's kind of odd. Yeah, you know, that is a thing. Why are your arms wrapped in that weird gauze? Well, you are, obviously, because you're asking for a clothing change immediately after you've become unpetrified. That seems like a, a mistake, that they meant to originally have you drop it nearby, and she would change into it, not... But you have to do it in her screen here, see where it says Give Equipment. So you can give her pretty much any armor set that you like. Let's see if I have any pyromancy stuff. I do not have much. I guess I'll give her... Leather armor and yeah, what about this? There we go. I'll talk more about her stuff later on. You can give her whatever you want, or you can give her just like a pair of gloves and she'll be there in her underwear later on. You know, she can give her anything you want. I'll talk about her stuff later because after we rest at a bonfire, she will return to Majula, thankfully. Doesn't seem overly phased by the fact that we're zombified. And now that the statue is gone, we can free up Benhart here to summon him later for a couple of boss fights. That's right. Hey, you dick. Yes, you can. Absolutely. And that sword's, sword is not especially good, although it does look really cool. <laughs> Reminds me a lot of the, uh, what is it, uh, Beor, Beor in uh, Demon Souls. Kind of a ripoff. You can get a gesture here, too. It was uh, hurrah, maybe, or uh, 
Joy? You really have to, with every character in the game, completely exhaust their dialogue. Just keep, you know, pestering them. Be a nuisance. Okay. And you can just head back to the Majula, but I'm too lazy to do that, and I'm going to use a uh, Homeward Bone. <clears throat> and then we'll go talk to Rosabeth and see how she's doing. And maybe reinforce our power... Well, no, probably not reinforce our club. Not yet. And I don't really have any much use for pyromancies. Is she up there by the obelisk? No, she's not. Let us rest. By the obelisk stairs. She's there. Good. You don't want her to remain there or talk to her there uh, as you continue, because there is a serious trap there that will start up if you go there without... Uh, are there no shoes to those things? Oh, oh well. Uh, that will start up if you pull that cord that she was just behind. It's kind of a troll move. You see, that armor does look better on a female character. It's funny when she says that when you've given her a pair of gloves and that's it. Love how their heads follow you. They do that in Demon Souls and Dark Souls too. Okay, let's take a look at her. She is the Pyromancy Trainer, and she can sell you Pyromancy. Pyromancy being, of course, fire-based magic. You have three fire spells, two versions of a fireball, one combustion, which is a short-range spell uh, that you can attack with... Um, what is that D&D &D term? You have to be hand-to-hand, -hand, sort of, uh, for a spell. I, I forget the term. Sort of like burning hands. You need to be like right in front of him, like a touch attack, almost. And you need to have... Uh, this is Poison Mist which uh, shoots a cloud of poison at an enemy. It can be very useful. We can also get Toxic Mist later on in the game. There's Flash Sweat, which kind of protects you against fire damage, but eh, aside from a few very small cases, eh, it's not that useful. And Iron Flesh, which makes you fat roll, move really slow, but also tank a lot of damage. This is much less useful than it was in DS1, because it does not really increase your poise as much, if I remember rightly. She also sells these burrs, but these are useless. As I said, the same thing with the uh, the Flash Sweat spell. You, re releasing your resistance to things is only a tiny stopgap and isn't really important. The same thing with the rings here. They, they, they're rings that um, increase your defense against fire, uh, lightning, and dark. But these things she sells are very important for your pyromancy. Fire seeds. In this game, you not only need to pay money to increase your fire, uh, pyromancy flame with souls, you need to buy or have a fire seed in, in your inventory, in which we got one in Harvest Valley. And you can use that to increase your pyromancy flame up to plus ten. And it costs about a thousand to get up there. You know what, why not? Why, why not do that? And you'll see the fire damage that you do, the fire adjust, will go up. But we don't have enough money or really the fire seeds to do that right now. I think you can buy, you can find ten fire seeds over time rather than buying them from her for 8,000. But uh, that's, um... That is probably, uh... No, you probably could do that before you reach the, uh, the castle. But if you want a quicker way, then you should just get the fire seeds here. Pyromancy, unfortunately, in this game, was kind of nerfed. It, it does not work in the same way that it did in Dark Souls 1, where it was really kind of the cheater's way to succeed at Dark Souls 1, because it was very powerful against a vast number of enemies, and you can do an extraordinary amount of damage without actually increasing your soul level. You just had to increase your pyromancy glove. And there are some spells in that game, like Great Combustion, that were ridiculously powerful, that could demolish even powerful bosses very, very quickly. Uh, but in that game, you could reinforce your Pyromancy Glove all the way up to plus 20, which was really unique. And in this game, you can only get it up to plus 10. Uh, and it's not nearly as powerful. The, the spells are pretty weak. They're kind of... Uh, all around, it's not really worthwhile, except for the ice level in the DLC, where it's kind of, sort of, a little bit useful. Really, only one Pyromancy spell I found was any good, and that was a Great Chaos Fireball. But you have to rank up in the Invader Covenant or get to New Game Plus Plus, your third playthrough of the game, in order to use it. What mountains? He didn't face any basilisks, apparently, because he didn't know to get away from them. T 
Teehee. Teehee. Okay. Now, I've mentioned this before about the other characters, but a lot of other characters in this game, it's been said, have, uh, by, by uh, uh, some YouTubers out there, that they are generically sad rather than mad. You know, they're depressed rather than manic and insane. And that is a big, big problem, and I think that's true. Because the character should be going totally insane, totally off the rocker. They shouldn't be just getting really, really miserable. And this character is even worse than all of those because she is way, way too cheery. The only character I can think of in Dark Souls 1 that came to Majula that was cheerful was kind of Patches could be cheerful, but he was only cheerful when he was trying to murder you. And that usually wasn't even in, in, uh, in Firelink Shrine. But in this game, we have a character who has a very minor backstory. She has no plot after we save her here. And she is very, very, very happy, upbeat, happy-go-luffy, cheerful, and it really, really contrasts sharply with the rest of the game. She sticks out like a sore thumb in this area, while everyone else is just sort of, uh, is just sort of sad or miserable. She's just happy and fun. And yes, I know that Solaire was really happy in Dark Souls 1, but he was happy in a manic way, where it seemed to contrast sharply with reality and he was clearly going a bit out of his head, and he eventually went totally insane and sunk into despair later on. But she just remains happy all the time, her whole time here, and it really, really is a bit jarring. I do not like that. But let's go back there and finally get into this area where I can get my clay clay, as I call it. I'm gonna go cray cray with the clay clay. This next area, by the way, where she was, is, you know, again, say it with me, because it's Dark Souls 2, it's a what? It's a trap. Of course it's a trap with a gank, with a bunch of enemies all attacking you at once. And if you don't polish off two of them in the initial area, well, then it's going to be even worse. But we're going to show you them. These uh, rather humorous-looking enemies that uh, have a trait that some of you who are familiar with Japanese raccoon iconology will probably recognize. Let's take a look here in this door. Yeah, do you, do you see that guy? Yeah, we're, we're going to get a closer look at them in a minute. Lloyd's talisman, not too useful. I'm just going to lure this guy out, even though I don't really need to. I, I should just kill him in one hit here. Take a look at that guy. Whoa! Whoa! Do you see that? Do you see that? Yeah. That guy has a serious, serious testicular issue sticking out there. Oh my sweet lord, there's something wrong there. Oh my god, I can't even look at Oh god, it's so dis... Oh, it's veiny and everything. Ugh. Oh my god. These guys that I call the nut men. I've also heard them called the chode men, I believe, by Ouroboros the ninja. I think he called them that, or someone did. And when I pull this lever, this door is eventually going to open, but not fast enough for that door to close instantly and four of those nutmen to fall from the ceilings and attack us. So let's pull it out. I think I can one-shot them, though, with my weapon, which is very helpful. Also, a basilisk will come in here, which we will discuss in a moment. These are another uh, set of odd guys that have inexplicable uh, weaponry. You know, they have weapons and armor that they drop that they do not carry, which is very uh, unusual in a Souls game. I may die here! Fuck! Fucking hell. Uh. Okay, let's try that again. It's pretty embarrassing to die to these guys, but I could have sworn I could one-shot them. I had no idea what was going on there. I guess these ones are stronger than the other ones that show up. And obviously they poison you, as you saw there. This may be a good time to talk about the direct hit system, which I obviously was not using correctly there. But let's talk about this basilisk. It is dead now, thankfully, and that is what you should do instantly upon finding a basilisk, because they will spray you with a horrible, horrible chemical that causes petrification. 
Look at that little mouth of his. Jeez. Disgusting little bastard. Those little dots there are its actual eyes. The big things are not eyes. They're like big rubber, rubber nipples on it. Those little things down there, those beady things, are its eyes. And that little sack down there contains the poison. But it's, it, it's, it's similar to poison that is a cloud. But it's not a cloud of poison. It's a cloud of petrification mist. And this petrification mist, when it builds up all the way, it is going to insta-kill you, turn, turn you into a statue, just like Rosabeth was. And that's obviously something we want to avoid, because that is not fun. And this is an Estus Flash Shard. That's very useful. I think up in these rooms, there is not anything really of use, aside from a hard soul. I think it's probably... It, it probably not, is not even worth it. I think it's a soul of a proud knight, or a soul of a brave warrior. But anyway, about the direct hit system. What that is, is... In this, in Dark Souls, in all of the Souls, in Demon Souls too. Well, I know in Dark Souls uh, 1 and Demon Souls, if you hit an enemy fully on, absolutely head on with the entire blade, like that, oh, oops, sorry, whoops a daisy, like that, it is going to do more damage than if you just nick it with the tip of the blade. So I was just hitting those enemies with the top quarter of the blade and not doing enough damage. I wasn't doing that one shot like I could do to the other guys. I was just doing a, uh, an unfortunately smaller amount of damage, which got me killed. And that's another interesting and exciting part of the Dark Souls, uh, uh, excuse me, the, the Dark Souls combat system that I really enjoy. And I am going to continue on down here. There are more nutmen. I don't think there are any more basilisks. Some of these nutmen, by the way, throw rocks at you, which I am not crazy about. I think that seems like kind of a silly way to attack, you know, just heaving a rock at someone. And I also do not really care for the design here, because it feels perilously like a hallway. The same thing that was harshly criticized in uh, Final Fantasy XIII, the final hallway. Uh, you know, the entire game was, was a gigantic hallway, unfortunately. You couldn't really have any freedom in it. What did you drop? Yeah, a long sword. You, you can get a drop of, I think, a mace. A drop of, uh, cestus. Some of them just punch, I think, the ones that throw rocks. Like, if you get up close, they'll just try to punch you. And there's one up there throwing rocks, I believe. And we can get a Pharos Lockstone once we get up there. But yeah, it was really strange that they cut off this area at the beginning of the game. The other uh, areas that they cut off in Dark Souls 1 from the beginning of the game were areas like uh, the Catacombs, where it had a strange mechanism that you had to discover in order to beat, or the, uh, the same thing with uh, the New Londo Ruins. I thought it was two... Oh, no, there he is. There's another guy. They all fell down. I know getting hit in the head with a rock can hurt, but I just feel that does just a wee bit too much damage. And there's another rock guy over here. There he is. He's really good at chucking those rocks at people. <laughs> Love that follow-through on the R1. And of course, because this is Dark Souls 2, in a few seconds we're going to come up with yet another bonfire. Oh, these disgusting nutmen. And here it is. Yeah, another bonfire right away. Fantastic. Why not, right? I mean, for heaven's sakes, it's been all of five minutes. Why don't we have another bonfire? And this Creighton up here. Yes, he is. Let us talk to him. Yeah, it looks like he has the Dragon Slayer crescent uh, axe. Not an especially good weapon. He has a creepy hockey mask looking kind of face. You can actually get that if you kill him, and you can purchase his armor from uh, Malentia in Majula. Yeah. 
Brightstone Cove Seldora is actually a couple of levels down that way, so that kind of confused me when I first came in here. There's no need to go down to this section. This is an actually an end game area that we cannot go back to for many, many more hours. And this is just another area with more Nutman. The same thing, we can't go down here uh, profitably without, uh, a, without defeating the four Lord Souls. That's actually where the castle is down there. So that's kind of neat, but we're going to go this way into the Misty Forest. And this is one of the uh, most unique and probably most praiseworthy areas of Dark Souls 2. It is an area that is entirely covered in a... Look at, all, look at the bloodstains. That should tell you right away that this area is very, very dangerous. And the enemies in here are actually ghostly humanoid figures that you can barely see. And even if you're looking directly, it's kind of like looking directly at the Predator from the, uh, the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie. If you're looking right at it, got a fire seed here. If you're looking right at it, you can kind of see it. But otherwise, you're not going to be able to, uh, uh, to see it sneaking up on you. And they can backstab you, and they have crossbows. So, all in all, a scary set of people. But let us talk to our friend here. And yes, there is a merchant in this area. He here says, tongue butthole. No, sir, that is not appropriate. What does this say? Head ahead. Correct. If you take a look here, we can see our merchant friend. This is Vengarl. I think of Ferosa. He is a head and some sort of ghost. And when I first came up here, I thought that he was like some sort of weird rock monster created from this statue here. Because I came up here and I was fighting those ghost guys and I swung my weapon and hit it, and I was like, oh my god, I hit someone, what did I hit, what's going on? I thought I'd lost him, but fortunately you get a, f a few bits of da a few hits early on where the enemies will not aggro on you. Got another northern style English accent like you'd hear in Game of Thrones. Vengaro really should be known as one of the great badasses of Dark Souls 2, but unfortunately we can summon him in to a couple of fights later in the game, and he's completely useless. <laughs> I mean, he's, he really undermines his character of being this mighty, ferocious warrior. Tragic, really tragic. Really, it's not so bad that you're a disembodied head. I guess he kind of became some kind of poet in his uh, in his ghostly years. Really living life to the fullest after his death. That's that's the way to go. Here's another character that just seems to be growing exhausted of the very idea of fighting. Maybe it's a subtle way, or not so subtle way, for the developers to tell us that we should be growing tired with, make, with these games after so many years, and that they're getting tired making them. Yeah, that's another really wasted opportunity, because we do get to fight Vengarl's body later on in the game, and it's a complete pushover because of the lack of poise. It should be this huge, tough, beastly creature, but it's not. It's weak, wimpy, and can be backstabbed very easily. It's no challenge to anyone. How? How do you learn new things every day, sitting as a head in this empty forest? Never called by a hate conversation, thanks to you, Vengaro. Yeah, the cool decapitate gesture. Let's keep talking to him now, because he still has more dialogue. We can't zoom in on him with the binoculars now. Yak, 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 this guy. Here 
Maybe they were engulfed in... Yeah, he's from Furosa. Land of badassery. Why this dialogue never ending? Imagine you don't get a lot to talk to out here. He says these, and that's, you know, like maybe the tenth time, one of ten times in the game we hear these characters mistakenly use a plural when they mean a singular. We actually get that helmet he's wearing there. That's, uh, that thing. And if you did miss the great sword that I'm using right now in No Man's Warp, you can come and buy it here. You can also get a ring of soul protection, but you can pick those up anywhere. You don't need to buy that. Great arrows for a great bow. We don't have a great bow just yet, because that's going to be in the area past Harvest Valley. And lightning urns. It's like a firebomb, but with lightning. Pretty useless. Maybe usable in PvP, but not to me. Gold pine resin. Uh, coat your right hand weapon and lightning. That can be pretty useful. And again, a miracle. Why does this guy just randomly have a miracle? That's that's not right. It, it takes away some of the magic of the magic in the game. If they can just ran, anyone can randomly have a couple of spells. And I'm going to purchase this weapon, the claymore. And I will need to get a few levels in order to do that. In order to use it, because I need some more dexterity. What's my dex? Twelve. I just need one. And I'm going to leave this area after picking up this soul over here. Hopefully I will not be killed by the ghostly crossbowmen here. This fucking crossbow guy. We're going to go back to this area later on, probably right after we defeat the Old Iron King. Alrighty. My level right now is uh, 43. And I think on my first playthrough of Demon Souls, I ended it at level 44 or 45. And we're not even halfway through this game, and I'm already up to the final level I was at, at my playthrough of Demon Souls. So that's a little bit on the sad side. That's, that's kind of strange that they changed it so much. Oh, Lord. Stop talking, woman. Okay. We have to kneel down like that. There we go. Now, thankfully, I can one hand this weapon, which is pretty neat. And I think I'm going to keep my shield for now. This weapon has an amazing move set. It's got Dat Thrust, which is awesome. It's got another thrust. That's great. This weapon is maybe not as awesome as it was in. Uh, Dark Souls uh, 1, especially because you can't get it right away. But it is still amazing. It's William Wallace's weapon. Of course this is cool. Let's see if we can reinforce this very much. Oh, we have tons of regular shards, don't we? I think I might want to keep my hat like that. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm kind of uh, fond of it that way. And... Ooh, i got a couple of large shards, too. Good. Maybe, just maybe, I can head down here and find some new armor, perhaps. Although I like the armor I have now. And he now has new stuff that he can sell you. Especially this, one of the coolest looking armors in the game that I'm just going to put on for you now. It looks incredible. It is the Elite Knight armor, and this was one of the best armors actually in Dark Souls 1. Uh, however, I used it so much there, I actually waited a long time before getting this armor in Dark Souls 2 and using it, but it just looks incredible. Look at those cloth physics. It really looks like a tabard that a soldier would wear with some makeshift plate and a bit of chain over it. It looks absolutely great. And let's see. 
if I can put on some heavier stuff here. And I think that might be about it. So, I'm going to continue on with Harvest Valley in the next episode. But for now, I am just going to praise the sun.